Hello, outcasts. Welcome back to Insanity Collection. We can't be the only ones that think Jack and Rose could have shared that raft and saved poor Leonardo DiCaprio from his overly dramatic demise in the Titanic movie. But that's a topic for another day. In this episode, we will be discussing the actual Titanic ship that inspired the movie and the fact that a novel written 14 years before the incident may or may not have predicted the tragic ending of the Titanic. But before we begin, please take a second to subscribe to our channel for more insane content. You don't want to miss any of our upcoming dark and mysterious content. The Royal Mail ship RMS Titanic that was built in Belfast, Ireland by Harland & Wolf was the world's largest passenger ship when it entered service with a length of 269 meters. The luxury passenger liner set sail on the 10th of April 1912, en route to New York City from Southampton, England. The Titanic was built with 16 watertight compartments, and the ship's builders claimed that if four of those compartments were flooded, the ship's buoyancy would remain unaffected. This claim led to the ship being called unsinkable. On the 14th, just four days after the ship sailed, at approximately 11.40 p.m., about 400 nautical miles, 740 kilometers south of Newfoundland, Canada, and the ship hit an iceberg on the starboard of the ship. The iceberg ruptured five of the 16 watertight compartments of the ship. That extra compartment just had to get ruptured, didn't it? Due to the water pressure, the ship divided into two at the midsection, killing about 1,500 passengers and ship personnel. Somehow, the ship that was loaded with all the luxuries in the world happened to have just 16 wooden lifeboats, which were enough to accommodate only a third of the total ship capacity. You know the rest. So, we're not going to go in too much detail about the catastrophe itself. After all, it is one of the most famous tragedies recorded in modern history. So anyway, this is where things start to get really weird. In 1898, 14 years before the Titanic sank, Mr. Morgan Robertson published a novel titled Futility, The Wreck of the Titan. So now you are thinking a man wrote a novel. So what? What's weird about that? Well, in his novel, Mr. Robertson tells a tragic story about a ship he called the Titan, a ship that was described as unsinkable and was counted among the greatest works of man. And yes, the novel even outlines the characteristics of the ship and how it sunk after it hit an iceberg. Many people have called Mr. Morgan Robertson clairvoyant due to the fact that his novel has so many similarities to the actual Titanic story. These similarities go way beyond the ships having nearly identical names or both meeting their Waterloo at the hands of an iceberg. Mr. Robertson has denied being a clairvoyant. Because what was he supposed to say anyway? Yes, I saw the greatest tragedy of my time in a vision, so I just wrote a novel about it and didn't try to stop it from actually happening. According to Mr. Robertson, he wrote his novel with the knowledge he gathered from his time as a cabin boy and information he had gotten from extensive research on maritime trends. It is a bit difficult to believe him, as the Titan and the Titanic share many things in common, including their sizes. The novel has been described by many as a prophecy or a revelation of what was to come 14 years later. We will never know if Mr. Robertson's novel was written by clairvoyance, or if it's a total coincidence. But what we do know is the novel and the RMS Titanic have uncanny similarities. And if you are wondering just how uncanny these similarities are, here are a few. They have similar names. Mr. Robertson's fictional ship was called the Titan, and the RMS was called Titanic. We really don't know if the people named the Titanic had read the novel before naming it, but we strongly doubt it, because who would want to name their ship after an ill-fated fictional vessel? Furthermore, it is documented that the name Titanic derives from Greek mythology. Both ships hit an iceberg near midnight. The Titan was said to have hit the iceberg at near midnight, and the Titanic hit at 11.40 p.m., Okay, seriously, what are the odds? But if we are being logical about it, Mr. Robertson had good knowledge of maritime trends 
and could easily predict that an iceberg would be in the way of the ship and such accidents are likely occur at midnight because of low visibility and would ultimately cause the ship to sink. The Titan was 800 feet in length, while Titanic was 882 feet. The similarity could be explained by the singular fact that any research done on ships and how they are built would show anyone how long or wide a ship could be built. Okay, maybe this one was just a coincidence. The speed at which the Titan hit the iceberg was 25 knots, and the Titanic was 22.5 knots. The logical explanation for this similarity is that a ship that huge would of course have a speed range. In writing the futility, Mr. Robertson could have randomly picked a number out of the range as his novel was fiction, but who's to say he didn't see the future? The Titan had a capacity of 3,000 passengers, but held 2,500 people. The Titanic had the same capacity, but held 2,200 people. This seems to be total guesswork on the side of the futility, but you have to admit the difference in number is very minimal. The numbers are still similar enough to send chills down our spines. Both ships were owned by the British. What the hell, Brits? Both ships sunk in the North Atlantic at exactly 400 nautical miles from Newfoundland. The logical explanation is that Mr. Robertson's vast knowledge on the sea and maritime trends was enough to help him make this up. But it seems a little too accurate to be a coincidence with the addition of the other similarities. Both ships had a serious lack of lifeboats. The Titan had 24, while the Titanic had just 20. Both the Titan and the Titanic were said to be unsinkable, therefore, they would have had minimal need for lifeboats. Moral lesson, folks, even if you think it's not going to rain, take an umbrella. Both ships had a triple screw propeller. Both ships sank on a cold night in April. The timing in the novel is a bit too accurate to be called a coincidence. But if Mr. Robertson has denied being a clairvoyant, who are we to negate that? We are negating that. If you call a ship unsinkable, chances are you are probably impressed by the watertight compartments. And both ships were called unsinkable. They were built with the best materials available. The Titanic was built with the aim of showcasing the high level of advancement in technology at that time. The Titan had 19 watertight compartments, while the Titanic had 16. According to the Titanic's builders, even if four compartments of the 16 watertight compartments were flooded, the ship would still have enough buoyancy and wouldn't sink. Somewhere along the line, Mother Nature decided to be a bitch and flooded five of the compartments. The point of impact for both ships was the starboard. The logical explanation would be that the starboard could easily be guessed as the point of impact that could cause the ship to sink. But let's be honest, logic is starting to make less sense at this point. The captain on the Titanic tried to reverse the ship when the iceberg was sighted, but it was a little too late to save the starboard from getting hit. Both ships had two masts. The Titan had 40,000 horsepower, while the Titanic had 46,000. Seeing these similarities outlined, Mr. Robertson's name will forever come up when the Titanic is spoken about, because so many people are of the opinion that his work was a warning about the Titanic. If it was, well that's definitely a red flag the world ignored. What do you think about the eerie similarities the novel shares with the actual Titanic disaster? Do you think it's clairvoyance or mere coincidence? Do you believe in clairvoyance? Tell us in the comments section below. Oh, and while you're at it, endeavor to read more books, because you never know which novel might contain the next warning to humanity. Just saying.